Thank you for joining us for this edition of LCPioneers.com Live, presented by PioStream, as we are with you a total of two days a week now as we move through the spring 2021 semester, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Facebook Live. You can find us most easily by typing in LCPioneers.com slash live, keeping you connected with student-athletes, coaches, alumni, and different members from throughout the Lewis and Clark College community. Hi, everyone. I am Ryan Goff. I'm the director of play-by-play -play, or play-by-play -play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark. Uh, we are the pioneers out of Portland, Oregon and members of NCAA Division Three, an opportunity for our student athletes to compete with over 430 institutions across the country. And we are a member of the Northwest Conference, nine institutions throughout Northwest Oregon and the state of Washington and Lewis and Clark sporting 19 intercollegiate athletics programs. So a chance for our student athletes to compete on that national stage, as well as in a unique setting in Division Three, the only institutions in the Pacific Northwest, including ours, based just six miles southwest of downtown Portland, Oregon. Uh, two guests per show now as we move into the twice a week format. So today we'll be talking to softball junior Lily Moffitt in our first segment. And then the second segment, we'll talk to class of 2020 Hall of Fame inductee uh, class of 2009, as far as graduation date, Tama Carlton of Lewis and Clark Cross Country and Track and Field. Those two interviews on the way in just a few moments. We invite you to get involved with the show. You can do so by leaving comments in our Facebook Live, as well as always emailing us to sports at lclark.edu. Edgar, it's so good to see you today on this Tuesday edition of lcpioneers.com live. If you ever have any questions for our guests or comments, other people you want to see on the show, we certainly encourage you to let us know by going to sports at lclark.edu and of course you can find us on social media too we are on twitter and instagram lc pioneers is our handle on both of those platforms so definitely give us a follow have a chance to interact and see some of the great photos that we get as competition has returned to lewis and clark and it was a big week of competition to boot uh, men's tennis in action getting their first nine nothing win of the year that was a northwest conference victory that they picked up over whitworth uh, women's soccer returned to griswold stadium for the first time in a couple weeks softball top of our minds hosting george fox as well and then there's uh, christian peeve you can see a uh, member of the men's tennis team like i said it's nine nothing win over whitworth followed by a seven two non-northwest conference win that's baseball they swept linfield first sweep for baseball since 2008 it really was a big weekend of sports on palatine hill and beyond and we're certainly appreciative to have everyone back and going not to mention lewis and clark's home track and field meet the lnc spring classic spring break classic happened over the weekend at elden elden fix track at griswold stadium a lot of great marks really some impressive marks too coming from first year or underclassmen too the uh, freshmen and sophomores have been outstanding so far for lewis and clark athletics that's jessica cerny she's a junior and throwing the javelin extremely well uh, as a junior for lewis and clark be sure to check out all of the stories all of the uh, recaps from this past weekend at lcpioneers.com and you can do so also to read soon we'll release our student athletes of the week and our pioneers of the week congratulations to lewis and clark freshman goalkeeper for women's soccer sophia young named northwest conference fall sports soccer defensive player of the week or student athlete of the week really exciting things there and then brett pearson was named the pitching student athlete of the week for baseball after a huge performance in lewis and clark's four game sweep of the linfield wildcats last week we'll tell you more about that and have it available to read on our website lcpioneers.com and then our lcpioneers.com live playlist still available to watch on demand at youtube.com slash lcpios you can also see all of our past interviews on our website lcpioneers.com inside the fan zone all right let's bring in our guest for today we'll talk to junior first of softball lily moffitt setting to join us on lcpioneers.com live lily thanks for taking the time to meet with us on this tuesday and it's kind of exciting because we've been doing the show since March of last year. And for so long, we didn't have the opportunity to talk much about competition. And we're going to get to do that with you as the Northwest Conference season has opened for softball. But let's start with kind of that full picture recap of a calendar in a pandemic, right? How are you doing as we turn the page into the later part of March 2021? So I'm doing way better. Thanks for having me here today, Ryan. I, at first, it was kind of a big bummer to get our season cut off. And as we were following that week, our first game to be against our past ex-coach, Paige Hall. And so that was a big game for us. And then to get that taken away was definitely a beat. But 
bringing it back into the school year, it's been getting way better and getting everyone to get connected and get back on the field is really just a big, big deal. And so it's way better. And I'm really happy that we're able to come out here, be safe and play and trying to get everything to normalize again. Oh, and, and how do you feel like things are going in, in that regard? I mean, you've been out playing softball. A lot of the teams are competing at Lewis and Clark, even just going to school, you know, classes and those kind of things. How do you feel in terms of, of where we're at at this stage with the pandemic? So it's still a new feeling, still getting used to that cohort classes and going in once a week and for lifting groups, still having to wear a mask, go in little groups here and there. And now being able to go out on the field and being able to socially distance and not wear masks is definitely starting to get to that normalized pattern going back into the game. But coming back to Lewis and Clark with the whole pandemic and everything, it's definitely been a big change. But I think our school's doing really well with keeping everyone safe and following these precautions to where it makes me feel more comfortable being back here on campus, and being back in the great community we here have here at LC. Yeah, Lily Moffat, our guest on lcpioneers.com live. And of course, we're continuing to update information regarding COVID-19 and athletics at lcpioneers.com slash COVID. So the latest information always available there. And it's exciting, Lily, that you're able to come back to campus and start to be part of the community and start to have things feel like we're not so into the pandemic while still remaining safe. And that gives us an opportunity to talk about the original reason why you came to Lewis and Clark in the first place. For you, what was uh, part of your decision as to attend? So funny thing, I had a lot of people back in my hometown, Half and Bay, where it's like very little population talking about how great Lewis and Clark was up in Portland, Oregon. And I was thinking, hmm, I've never heard of Lewis and Clark before. Let me check it out. And right as soon as I open that website, I get a call from my tournament team coach. And he tells me, hey, Shauna Cyrus is interested in you. Would you like to schedule a recruiting trip? And I was like, this must be fate because I just opened the website looking at the school and I instantly fell in love when I first came to campus. The community, the sun was out. Everyone was just very, very friendly. And it just made me feel like home. And getting to meet everyone in the athletic department was just the cherry on top and just the community in general. I just felt like this was my place to be. So right away, turned in an application, tried to get accepted, got in, and here I am now, still loving my decision I made today. Uh, funny story, we actually have these great cookies that the moment you click our website, our coaches call you. It's a, it's a tremendously a crazy thing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's, that's a cool story, uh, how you wound up to, to come to Lewis and Clark. And when you, when you describe the campus or the Portland area or just your experience more in general, to other people who maybe have never been to Lewis and Clark or even to the Pacific Northwest, right? What are some of the things that you share at the top, the headline, if you will? So when we have, especially a recruit or people that are coming to look at Lewis and Clark or even asking me back at home, I tell them, you got to get your butt up here as soon as you can, because it's as beautiful as the pictures, if anything, even better when you look it up, because I know with times now, it's people will reconsider or just like question about, how the virtual aspect of it may not be as well as it is in person. So when you get up here and you see it in person, it definitely is just the perfect place to be. You can talk about the community and how with teachers and professors, it's way better to have a smaller private school and less population than it is up at UW to where there's so many kids in a classroom at once. You wanna be recognized by these professors and your community you get a better connection with all these people and with everything being around as resource wise and people wise, it really is just a great place to be to where I recommend it to so many people back at home. I've had many people from my hometown come up and visit, not even just me, just to come see the school. And when we have recruits around, Coach Cyrus would be like, Lily, why don't you go talk to them? I'll be over there just bragging, bragging, bragging about my school. And I have to tell them this is not for like publicity or anything. This is literally to tell you this is the place to be. This is a great environment, great community, and everything on top of that that you're looking for into a school. And it's so great to have you here and be part of the softball program. So let's shift gears into the sport of softball. What got you started into the sport? And when did you kind of know that this was something you would enjoy, something that you were good at? So when I was younger, I started off playing baseball when I was 11 or 12 years old, and I was the only girl in our little league. 
and I was, I'm a very loud person, very talkative. I am just going crazy, pretty crazy kid, I would say. And so as soon as I was getting older into baseball, then I got up all the way till my second year of majors. And then I was thinking, well, I don't know if I'm comfortable playing juniors baseball. I'm starting middle, I'm in middle school now. I have some friends that want me to come play softball. So I go check it out, quick tryout. And I was thinking, I think this is where I need to be all along. Like, I feel like I belong here to where I was bouncing back and forth with baseball and softball. I leave a baseball game early to go to softball. And it was just all crazy to where I needed to make that decision when I was about 14, 15 years old. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to go with softball. Like softball, I feel like is my passion. This is the sport I need to be with. And so from then on, I have just loved the game, loved playing. And I love helping other girls who have wanted to play softball to where I knew that this is what I wanted to play in college, all summer, everything to where I just, softball is a part of me. I love, I wouldn't know what I would be, who I would be today without softball. Our guest is Lily Moffitt, junior for Lewis and Clark softball on lcpioneers.com live. And uh, the season is in swing. You talked about that moment last year where you were scheduled to play former Lewis and Clark assistant coach Paige Hall, who became the head coach at Willamette. Well, we go full circle, and you've at least gotten two non-conference games in against Willamette. You win those games, and then you start the conference season last weekend uh, against George Fox. Uh, Describe what it was like to see Paige on the other side in Maroon, and then certainly the opportunity to start competing again and getting more into a flow. So first, when we first arrived at the field, then we were all thinking, all of us who have played with Coach Hall before, we're like, do we go say hi? Like, is the competition like on? And so she came over, said her quick hellos, but I think it was more for not trying to show the team that she's just trying to be like too friendly, that this is competition. Now we're here. They want that win. We want that win. We just won that game so bad. So we came out, we executed, we had fun and we just gave it all kind of saying like, this is what you're missing coach hall, because we are ready. We are coming after you. We're coming after the NWC conference tournament. So it was a lot of fun going out there, seeing her still, seeing that she's doing well. And I'm really happy that she's able to get a head coach position, even if it's at Willamette, like somewhere that's not Lewis and Clark, but she's still a great part of the Pio community. But sure, we miss her, but we definitely gave her what she's missing. <laughs> well, and now, of course, there's a good chance to talk to, you know, the, the former coaching staff. You have Paige Hall leave. Shauna Cyrus has been here a long time and is your head coach at Lewis and Clark. And it's always fun to talk to Coach Cyrus about her team and about the things that you are able to accomplish as a team. Let's discuss then what it's like to play for Coach Cyrus. What are some of the qualities of Shauna that you truly enjoy? I love her energy and her passion and her love for the game. She loves everything about this game, everything for each player. So where that's what really brought me into to being a part of the LC softball community because as soon as I came in, her drive and her integrity, her motivation, everything about her is just so amazing that it really just draws you in and makes you feel confident as a player to be here, to be playing for Lewis and Clark. She's always there, always cheering, always giving her all, and that's what you look for in a coach. She's very, very intelligent when it comes to softball and telling us what to do and keeping our energy up because even though the game – we're all cheering in the dugout, and she's over there busting her booty, always yelling, always talking, always say, giving everything she's got, which is amazing. Now you have uh, the season in full swing, and we've seen a lot of uh, softballs leave in the yard. It seems like the bats are going so far for the Pios. Uh, you have a tremendously talented lineup when it comes to the offensive side of things. Uh, when you characterize what the strengths are of this team, well, what are some things that come to mind for you? We have a huge support system. We have a lot of fight. We have a lot of love the, love for the game. And we have so much potential for this team. There's no drama, which is amazing. It's We're always positive, always supportive of each other. And we're always giving everything we got. We tell each other we're doing this all for each other. We're in this together. There's no I in team, but there's a me to where you are the one who is going to be there for your team and you're there to give everything you got for this team, for this sport, for this game. 
to where it's amazing how all these girls are my sisters and I know that I can count on them, whether it's on the field, off the field, after college, and just the fact that I have a team to where I feel so close with and I trust with everything on and off the field is definitely a privilege to me. And the fact that we can go out there, have a great time, even if we don't win, we're still giving all we got and we're still there for each other, picking each other up, supporting each other. It's amazing. Well, this weekend, uh, big games in Spokane against the Whitworth Pirates, which is the last team that you played prior to the halting of the season, eventual cancellation of the season last year. So wish you good luck on the road trip to Spokane. Let's shift gears then to the academic side of things. You choose psychology as your major. What was it about that uh, that academic program uh, that excited you most? So going in high school, I you took your core classes, you took all the classes you needed to take until I got to my senior year of high school and they were offering an AP psychology class. And I've always been interested in the behavior of people and how the brain works and everything to where I was like, let's give this class a go. One AP class I'm like really interested in and I think could give me some potential for the future. So I took this class and I instantly, instantly fell in love with the subject to where when I I heard about Lewis and Clark and their psychology program being one of the most popular and best programs on campus, aside from many other popular and amazing programs we have here on campus. But I heard that psychology was one of the biggest and the professors are very great. And when I came on my recruiting trip, um, most of the softball players were psychology majors and they were describing how great and how amazing this courses, the courses were and the programs and study abroad programs, especially the professors. I met one or two on my recruiting trip to where I knew that this was a topic that I wanted to study in. And I've talked about and thought about being an elementary school teacher in the future or a therapist, child psychologist, sports psychologist. There's so many different potential jobs that I've been looking for in the future that I think that this major can definitely help me with. But I just instantly fell in love with the topic. And it's very interesting and I just got drawn into it quickly. Yeah, and, and it's great that you talk about the relationships that you have the opportunity to build with professors or fellow students. The collaboration in this environment is really unique, and I enjoy it a lot to hear those stories coming from our student athletes and alumni, uh, for that matter, as well. One other thing that you do, and it's it's something that uh, you work with me on, is PioStream. You're part of the big reason why we're able to put out, especially during a non-pandemic time, one of the best Division Three broadcasts in all of uh, collegiate athletics, all of NCAA Division Three. And I bring that up because uh, one of the things that you get to do when you're part of PioStream is you have an opportunity to use that access in Portland and go on... I guess it'd be like a field trip, but it's an in-person time to see how the in-house broadcast is made for the Portland Trailblazers. When you had the opportunity to go on that trip with us, what were some of the things you remember most? Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I remember I had practice and then I had to get an Uber and I went to this trip because I was not missing this opportunity. So as soon as I got there in that Uber, there was people that came out, got me, brought me inside. And I remember just going through the security going in, seeing the whole backstage to where I felt like I was a celebrity coming to perform a concert or something. It was amazing. Like everything, all the screens, all the producers, everyone was just so friendly, very communicative to where it was exactly like what we were doing here uh, for our PyroStream community and to where it was just bigger. And it was just amazing. There were so many different rooms, so many different people. And it was just incredible of how many different things there are and how many different resources there are to get those games broadcasted and going. So just to experience that was definitely a once in a lifetime, amazing opportunity to where that also made me think about having a career like that after college to where I have been talking to you about it for a bit, Ryan, because I love doing what I do for the pilot stream replay technician, getting into the directing program and it was definitely an amazing opportunity and a once in a lifetime like 
awesome experience. Well, you're certainly good at what you do, uh, both with Pio Stream and then certainly, of course, uh, you know, taking down second base for the the Pioneers. Unassisted double play so far this year as well. <laughs> From your point of view, it was a tremendous play. Uh, Lily Moffitt, best of luck, like I said, in Spokane this weekend against Whitworth uh, and for the rest of the 2021 season. And certainly thank you for your time today on the show. Thank you for having me, Ryan. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Absolutely. That's Lily Moffat joining us on LCPioneers.com live. Uh, a- extremely talented. Uh, replay technician is the job with Empire Stream, where we have two different looks that we can bring back and put on the air during any of our broadcasts. And she's solely responsible for most of those. And then moving into the director's chair where the students are, you know, anything you see during uh, our non-pandemic time with you know multiple camera angles, whether we're running a four camera broadcast for most of our sports, maybe five or six for some others, those are all ran by students. We And we have very little time to be able to actually get them up to speed on how to do that. So they're also learning a lot on the fly. But what is neat is some of the techniques that we talk about can be seen in the bigger picture when we take them to, say, a Portland Trailblazers broadcast and fill in the direct, the director at uh, the Rose Garden or Moda Center uh, is tremendously kind to let our students come in and take a look at the behind the scenes of the in-house program, which is what you see on the Jumbotron while attending the game. But then also usually an opportunity to maybe go look inside the production truck of the TV broadcasts, a lot of pre and halftime show look-ins that the students get to see as well so it really is a cool opportunity we look to expand that program hopefully soon too with the uh, portland timbers and portland thorns as well on the mls and nwsl side of things so it's great that uh, lily has some interest in in pursuing that because i I think she's certainly capable but more so uh, just the fact that it was a fun experience and something that i feel is pretty unique at lewis and clark so always fun to talk about that and certainly uh, softball is off to a tremendous start uh took one game last week in the opener against george Fox looking to see how well they do against Whitworth, a team that they took three of four of uh, last year, which was pretty exciting. All right, when we come back, we'll talk to former Lewis and Clark track and field and cross country student athlete Tama Carlton, a member of the Lewis and Clark Hall of Fame class of 2020, which will be inducted at some point in the future as soon as, again, things with the pandemic slow down and we can have an in person ceremony. More information, of course, when that is announced at LC Pioneers. Com. So we'll talk to you here in just a few moments. Appreciate you being with us on this Tuesday edition of LCPioneers.com Live, presented by PioStream. I'm Casey Jones, and I teach a range of classes, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and also some advanced classes. And I have a research lab that currently I have four students working with me um, as part of the Rogers program. The summer experience is a way to get really deeply involved in the science that is here and be able to um, start to define what might be what you want to do next. So the brown bag gives our students a chance to explain their research and really show the context and the application of what they're doing to a very broad range of students and faculty. It's interesting to be able to communicate to other scientists what your work is, and it forces you to learn how to talk about your subject so that not only experts in your field can understand it, but others can understand it as well, which I just believe is a good life skill. To talk about your research in a way that anybody can understand it really is a valuable experience, and it's something that you don't get a lot of practice for except in these contexts, because oftentimes you're giving a presentation to a classroom filled with people who know basically the same things that you do, but in a brown bag, You have to be able to um, explain and provide motivation for everything that you're working on and why it's important and why it's relevant to be studying. My favorite spot on campus is like right outside the Dovecote, little benches and there's flowers growing there and you can get a little coffee at the Dovecote and sit there. My favorite spot on campus is definitely the weight room. Um, I get that uh, everybody loves like the gardens or uh, the manor house, but um, our facilities for athletics here are actually amazing too. And the weight room is definitely my favorite spot. My favorite spot on campus um, would either be the Glade outside of the athletic facilities or South Campus. What is my favorite spot on campus? I really like the back porch of the manor house. Um, It looks out on Mount Hood and on a clear day, it's super beautiful just to sit around with friends.
You're watching lcpioneers.com live presented by PioStream. Thanks for being with us on this Tuesday edition of the show. And we've shifted to twice a week now. So the show is broadcast live on Facebook Live, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesday and Thursdays. But instead of having one guest per show, as we did when we were four days a week, we're having two guests per show. And that's why today's exciting, a chance to bring in class of 2009 alumnus, cross-country track and field. Tama Carlton joins us on the show. Tama, great to catch up with you, and, and thanks for making time for us today to talk about your experience at Lewis and Clark and, and where you've been since, plus, of course, Hall of Fame induction as well we got to get to. So we have a lot on the, on the docket. Uh, let's just start off with, with how have things been over the course of the pandemic? How have you been dealing with uh, a lot of uncertainty on your side of things? Yeah, thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so my life upended for lots of reasons in the pandemic. I moved across the country, I had a baby, and I started a new job. So um, I think not a, not a very usual pandemic experience, but I'm loving being back in California where I can quarantine in the beaches and trail run a lot. And um, I've really been focused on um, doing some research on COVID. I'll, we'll talk about it. I'm a professor, so transitioning some of my research towards thinking about it and you know, doing what I can to support friends and family. Yeah, I'm excited to hear all the stories uh, of what you've been doing over, you know, 10 plus years since you graduated at Lewis and Clark. And I always like to start this question with our current student athletes, just like I do our alumni, the origin story. So let's go there first. What was it about Lewis and Clark that appealed to you and why you ultimately chose to compete and study here? Sure. Yeah. So I came from a really tiny high school um, and no one in my family had gone to college. So I was really shooting in the dark, looking at schools and trying to figure out where to go. Um, and really what made it happen was that the outreach from the athletics department just really sold me on Lewis and Clark. So I was already excited about small class sizes and the liberal arts education. Coming from a town of 250 people, the idea of going to a big public university with 25,000 people was just like far too overwhelming. So I was really excited about Lewis and Clark. And then I did a visit and met the team and met the coaches. Keith Woodard was um, assistant coach at the time and just felt like this was a place where I could excel academically, be supported and have this really exciting athletic career. And um, it just, as soon as I had that visit, I came home and I knew that it was the place for me. Well, and I do have to tell you that I appreciate the fact that you were talking about being from a very small town. And usually when I hear that, it's thousands of people. I'm from a town of under 500 people. So the fact you came from around 250, uh, you know uh, that, that, that small town. <laughs> yeah, you know that small town life for sure. Once you got to campus, once you started taking classes and you started to compete, what were some of the aspects that kind of hit you on the front end of like, wow, this is the place that I want to be? Yeah, there's some great... Um moments. I think Lewis and Clark, both athletically and academically, um, I had a lot of people putting really high bars in front of me. So really challenging me, but providing the support that I needed to overcome them. And this was in both sides. So I started as a cross country runner, never having run a cross country race in my life. And then I qualified for nationals my freshman year. And that was, you know, Keith and David Fix and my teammates, like showing me the way in the sport that I was still learning and, um, and, and, but expecting a lot out of me. Like I knew my coaches expected a lot out of me and I, and challenged me, but gave me the support I needed to achieve that same thing in, in economics and math, just Cliff Becker in particular in the econ department, Roger Nelson in the math department, you know, I came in very nervous about being underprepared from my tiny high school, um, not having AP classes. And, you know, they both, you know, expected me to achieve well, there was no sort of hand-holding, but it was, I'm going to support you in reaching these really high goals. And so I just felt so stimulated and excited about um, having doors open, but also having people really push me hard in, in all dimensions of who I was. Tama Carlton, our guest on lcpioneers.com live, class of 2009 alumnus of cross country and track and field. And and to this day, your name is in the record books at Lewis and Clark. So clearly, you know, you had that growth and that accomplishment to the point where you're inducted into the class of 2020 for the Lewis and Clark Athletics Hall of Fame. When you found out that that was the case, what was your reaction? Oh, I feel so honored. I feel like I'm, I'm not quite sure deserving of the award. The people that are next to me, I'm just so in awe of the, the people that are in the Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, my journey in college, and I think this is true for a lot of female athletes in particular, is you're figuring out injury and how to push yourself. I had some really exciting accomplishments early on, and I, I really didn't finish my athletic endeavors at Lewis and Clark at the level that I think I could have. So I feel so honored to have made the Hall of Fame, I think, you know, not quite realizing my potential in college. And I've been you know excited to keep running after Lewis and Clark uh, to try to 
keep improving as, a, as an athlete afterward. Uh, I mean, that's interesting for me to hear only because, I mean, your uh, accomplishments at Lewis and Clark are still talked about to this day of, of all the <laughs> things that you did, including, of course, a road scholarship. Right. And, and one thing that's great for the department and something we definitely take pride in is the fact that all of Lewis and Clark's road scholars have been student athletes. And you certainly were one. Uh, what was the process like? Uh, to, to go through the Rhodes Scholarship and certainly what were some of the outcomes uh, of having the opportunity to go through that program? Yeah, it's an uh, amazing experience and I feel very fortunate to have had that opportunity. So um, Lewis and Clark really pushed me and noticed me. You know, this is another thing about this small school. I don't think I would have ever thought, you know, I see this very prestigious international scholarship. I should apply because I'm totally capable of getting this. Instead, it was multiple faculty members across different departments, even departments I was not a, a student in, noticing me and seeing that I had potential and encouraging me to apply and, and making that application possible. So a lot of people across campus pushed me to do it. And I was like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll give it a shot. Who knows? Um, and through whatever set of fortunate circumstances, um, I won a chance to go to Oxford. And this scholarship is really neat because it's focused on getting a higher education degree at Oxford University, but it's also about bringing people from across the world together in a community focused on figuring out how to do what we call fighting the world's fight. So in whatever way it is, what are you going to do to give back to society using the skills and the interests that you have? And so it really, it was an experience for me of figuring out, you know, what do I want to do to give back in what ways and what ways are my skills going to help me do that and um and you know filled, formed this international network of people that are doing amazing interesting things all over the world and and you said you know research and, and some of the stuff that you're doing now uh what is the update post-graduation post road scholarship what are you doing now professionally and what are some of the things that you enjoy most about it yeah so coming from a family where no one went to college um i went on and got so many degrees you know my family thinks it's ridiculous i just kept educating myself um, which is a little bit of a selfish activity. So I hope that ultimately it gives back. So I um, got two master's degrees at Oxford, really began to think about the problem of climate change. And I loved economics and math at Lewis and Clark. And it, I sort of brought it together with climate change in my um, master's and, and doctoral work, ultimately at Berkeley, trying to think about what climate change means for economics and how we can use economics to understand and hopefully help solve this problem. So I went on and got a PhD at Berkeley and just started as a professor here at UC Santa Barbara. And most of my day is thinking about what is the climate doing to our societies and our economies, and then how can we work on, on using that information to help solve this problem, both for ourselves and for our children. Yeah, I, and I, I will tell you, I appreciate that work. Uh, it's something that seems as we've had unprecedented wildfires in the Pacific Northwest, and then very recently, you know, ice storms, the likes of which I have never seen before. And then you look at what's happening through Texas. Um, yeah. what, what are some ways that, that people in the general public can best educate themselves around issues of climate change? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, it's easy for a lot of academics to sort of write papers and then publish them and have other academics read them. I try to work really hard to make sure that, that what we're learning about this problem does get out into the public, but, um, you know, maybe we're not doing a great job, but um, I, I think there are some, in increasingly you can learn a lot from um, media outlets that are doing a lot with data, like places like the New York Times do really amazing, Bloomberg do really amazing things with getting data out there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of access to data. I can do a plug for climateimpactlab.org where we are working really hard to get our research out there to people. You can click on your home location, learn about how much it's warming, learn about some of the risks that you might be facing going forward. Um, and then I would really say, you know, like this is a big global problem and we're going to solve this by electing the right public officials to solve it. So I think it's really great to take private action on, on environmental issues, but I would really encourage everyone to get out and vote and vote people in the office who are going to tackle this at the scale that it needs to be tackled, which is nationally and globally. I mean, I, I, I appreciate that because that is some good information to share because uh, this is one of my favorite things about being an interviewer is the curiosity behind the kind of work that people do. So the fact that you're willing to give us some insight into that, I, I certainly sure. do appreciate. And, and back to the topic of, of running, let's, let's close out with you know, post-collegiate competition. How have you stayed active in the running community? Is that still a big part of your life? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think I hinted at this. I really felt like I didn't reach my full athletic potential at Lewis and Clark. So I was looking for ways to keep doing that. Um, I competed at um, Oxford with their varsity team. And so, you know, the biggest competition there is cross country Oxford versus Cambridge. Um, and that cross country is literally like you are going through creeks and climbing up mud banks, like English cross country is where it all started. And it was an amazing experience to be able to, to do that. Um, and then at Berkeley, I found a really amazing um, club team. And I would encourage people who are looking for opportunities. There's some really exciting, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, um, like cross country focused running teams and great club circuits. So I competed in um, club cross country nationals and um, have continued to race there and then ran my first marathon um, in Chicago a couple of years ago. So have really loved building community and some of my best friendships in post collegiate running. Well, you mentioned a lot happened uh, during the course of a year of a pandemic, one of which was having a child. Yes. How's the kiddo? He's great. He's uh, just going about to turn eight months. His name's as Atlas, and uh, he's just a joy. He's awesome. Well, uh, we certainly hope to meet Atlas uh, yes. as soon as we can have you for an in-person ceremony induction into Lewis and Clark Athletics Hall of Fame. But until then, Tama Carlton, thank you so much for taking time to update us on things on lcpioneers.com live. Thanks so much for having me. Bye, guys. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. And I love the fact that we're able to catch up with so many of our alumni through the show. That's something that uh, I've enjoyed thoroughly reaching out to people, seeing when we can have them on, have a chance to talk. Uh, and it's neat, too. You know, I've now been associated with Lewis and Clark uh, over the span of a decade and Tama Carlton winning the road scholarship was kind of like that first headline that happened when I was at Lewis and Clark, uh, starting Pio stream kind of in the vein that it is now, um, back in 2010, that was like the headline moment winning that scholarship post graduation class of 2009. And then we celebrated that during the 10, 11 academic year. I remember there was a big ceremony during halftime of one of the basketball doubleheaders. It was a really neat moment, uh, to be part of and something that I've always remembered. And then of course, like like I mentioned, uh, you can't really spend much time uh, in the Pamplin Sports Center talking about athletics, especially uh, the running sports, track and field and, and cross country without hearing Tama's name. So uh, certainly appreciative of Tama for taking the time to join us today and learn about what uh, she's been up to in that anecdote about climate change. I, I mean, you have somebody who's doing that at the, the highest level uh professionally. I, I love to get that insight. So I'm happy I asked that follow-up question. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. As I've mentioned a couple of times, we're now on a Tuesday, Thursday format for lcpioneers.com live. And right now we do have one guest confirmed. We'll talk to the head coach of Lewis and Clark rowing, Sam Taylor. There could be a rowing competition for his team as scheduled right now for April 3rd. So we'll see something coming up in the next week and a half for the rowing team at Lewis and Clark. And then we are working on trying to get another guest from the track and field realm uh, or the football realm coming up uh, to follow Sam on Thursday. Like I said, two guests per show now, and uh, we're certainly appreciative that we have the opportunity to talk to our student athletes, coaches, alumni, and different members from that throughout the Lewis and Clark College community on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ryan Goff. Big thanks to Lily Moffitt and Tama Carlton for joining us as our guests today, and we will see you again soon for more of the show, which you can watch on demand inside the fan zone at lcpioneers.com or, of course, uh, check out on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash lcpios. Until we see you on Thursday, thanks so much for having fun with us. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. I think everyone should take an uh, intro to chemistry because um, the chemistry department here is phenomenal. Um, everyone I've known has had a good experience with everyone in that department, so I think it was a worthwhile course to take. What is one class that everyone should take at Lewis and Clark? Um, I really enjoyed education in a complex world. You kind of get to discuss all the issues that exist within education today, and you get to kind of explore that by going to classrooms firsthand and volunteering with children, which I thought was a really wonderful experience. One class that everybody should take at Lewis and Clark is anything with Kuhn Dietrin, though. Um, I think he definitely changed how I thought about rhetoric and media studies and just education in general. For me, it was international affairs, just intro to international affairs, because I think uh, it really gives a good perspective on important issues around the world.